Hey everyone, welcome to Garden Fork, another episode in our beginning beekeeper video series. Uh, all the rest of the videos about beekeeping, the link should be right below here at the end of the video as well. But this is the fall and I'm doing a fall sugar feeding and I wanted to take you guys along for the ride. So again, I just want to emphasize, I'm not the master beekeeper guy. I'm just kind of making videos about my experiences as I learn about beekeeping and I never stop learning. And I learned some new stuff that I'm going to share with you. Oh, that guy doesn't like me. Um, sometimes in the fall they get a little agitated, even when they're really calm hives. This is what I uh, am going to be using. This is a top feeder, it's called. Some people use a frame feeder. Some people use a jar feeder out the front of the hive. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the jar feeders because you have to fill them up a lot. The frame feeders, you have to open the whole hive up to fill them, which is a, a um, I'm like, why well, do that? And these top feeders, I've gone through a couple different versions and this is the one I'm liking right now. I'll link in the show notes to um, the specific uh, product listing. But I like these because you don't have to take the hive apart. You just pop the top cover and you can fill them back up again. And this puppy takes four gallons of sugar syrup. And the bees, from what I've experienced, they don't drown nearly as much as some of the other kind of feeders I've seen. So we're going to open up our hives and put these on because it's the fall. I have a smoker lit, but I'm probably not going to use it. I'm I kind of avoid using a smoker for the most part, unless I need to drive the bees down. But we're just going to pop the top on that one right there. I strap these hives. Um, you can learn more about that in some of our other videos. But we have bears and we have high wind here. So I'm just going to take the outer cover off. They don't like that popping noise, by the way. It's about 58 degrees uh, and it's cloudy and rainy here, so they're, they're pretty quiet. They're a beautiful color though. So we're going to remove this inner cover and we're not going to put this back on. So we need to get the bees that are on this cover off of here and into the hive. And that always is usually fine. So I try and open these covers as quietly as possible. Just less jarring noise the better. So there's quite a few bees on the inner cover and we will gently, gently brush them off or you can tap this and they'll come off. Notice I'm not smoking them. I just, I don't really see the need to smoke them at this point. When you smoke a hive, it, it causes an alarm reaction. They start gulping down uh, their honey stores or their sugar stores and I want them to keep those stores for winter rather than me alarming them. So if I can do this without opening the hive, without smoking the hive, it's all the better. Come on, girls. So our sugar feeder sits in a shallow frame and I, I built the frames rather than buy them, but you might want to buy them because um, they're exactly cut the right way. But this has a little bit of a space in here and I'll show you what we're going to do with that space because uh, I did that on purpose. These are um, winter uh, patties for the bees and I'm going to put one of them on here. You can buy them, I'll link below to where to get them. And then I'm going to lay one of these on top of the hive on the side here. You could put two down if you wanted. I'm going to just put one for now and then the feeder will go on here. You might want to separate these ahead of time because the, um, now I got this gook all over me. It's a more of a carbohydrate based uh, winter feed for them. Not a lot of pollen because you don't want them raising a lot of brood right now. You want them getting ready for winter. When you put the sugar feeder on, notice there's no inner cover below it or above it. Just right on top of this, we're going to put the outer cover because this is just a short term, couple of months kind of thing here. And they can do without the upper entrance for that amount of time. 
I always dribble a little bit of syrup down the slot that goes back into the hive so that they know that there's some sugar syrup up here. I mean, they'll probably come find it anyway. This is a two to one, two pounds of sugar to one pound of water. And one pound of water is equal to one pint of water, basically. Now, if you have some aggressive hives, you have to do this quickly because this can cause robbing from other hives as well. So be careful. I put some essential oil mix in here as well. I'll link to information about that. If you put too much essential oil, um, man, it can cause a feeding frenzy, uh, the robbing frenzy. So you will feed your bees until they stop taking the syrup down. And then um, you can pour back into the jugs and use it in the springtime. I store it in the refrigerator in a cold or in a cold basement over the winter. I have this hive already tilted. I tilt all the hives in the winter um, so if there's any condensation. We can we talk about that in another video, I'll link below. Um, so that's why the syrup is tilted in the feeder here. You don't have to tilt the hive just yet, but this one just happened to be tilted. I don't see any bees coming up yet, but they will come up through here and they'll be on the inside of that screen, crawl down here and feed. And this is the best design I've found yet. Um, these weren't inexpensive, but the, the company that makes them has good products. Here's a yellow jacket that's already found the syrup. Uh, you want the outer cover to go on here quickly because otherwise the bees are going to fly in here and uh, they will be enclosed in here. They can't get into the hive from here. Brooklyn rooftop and man is that sun bright. Um, so we've got two hives up here that have feeders as well I want to show you all right. So that was filled two days ago. You have to be careful when you open up a sugar feeder where there's a lot of bees around because they get a little stir, they'll fly right in. But this is a plastic feeder. And I've got a spacer in here because I put some pollen patties in there um, just because I thought there was a bit of a darth. But this is um, the feeders I used to use and I, I'm not as big of a fan of them. Um, but it's what I got so that's what I'm using. You want to get that lid back on quickly because there's yellow jackets around here and bees from another hive can induce robbing. I don't know if we can see it with the camera, but the Statue of Liberty is right there. Wave hello. This is not an ideal hive stand, but it's what we had this spring when we put this swarm on here. I have a, I just built another hive stand. I guess we should do a video about that. Um, so that's not a long-term thing, okay? That's a hive stand. So this is a uh, wooden entrance reducer. You can actually see that it's been chewed by a mouse a couple years ago. But I'll have to put a reducer on the other hive soon as well. Always like to hear from you guys. If you have questions or comments or how you guys do fall feeding. I'd like to hear about that because I learn from you as well in the comments below here. But we'll be uh, wrapping up for winter here in a couple weeks. It's just kind of uh, definitely a fall cloudy day and there's a yellow jacket on me. So I gotta go. All right, see you.